Chapter 6, Introduction to Continuous Probability Distributions. In this video, we'll be focused on the standard normal distribution and how to use it to determine probabilities of events. So the normal distribution is a bell-shaped distribution with the following properties. First, it's symmetrical in that each side is a mirror image of the other. It is unimodal, meaning it has only one mode. The mean, median, and mode are equal. The amount of variation in the random variable determines the height and spread of our curve or distribution. And our distribution is asymptotic in that it does not ever reach the x-axis. So our normal distributions can have different shapes depending on the mean and the standard deviation. By changing the mean, we shift our distribution to the left or the right, and by changing our standard deviation, this increases or decreases the spread or the width of our curve. Recall in chapter three, we learned about the empirical rule, where within one standard deviation of our mean, 68% of our data falls. 95% of our data is within two standard deviations of the mean, and virtually all of our data is within three standard deviations of the mean. And I say virtually because there is still a slim chance that we have some values outside of our three standard deviations, and those are considered outliers. So with our normal probabilities, because x is continuous random variable, and recall in chapter five, we were working with discrete random variables, numbers that you can count. In chapter six, we're doing continuous random variables in that you can't count them because it includes all values, even down to the decimal. That means the probability of a particular x is equal to zero. And it's not very useful for us to try to find an exact uh, x value. Instead, when we're working with continuous random variables, we are looking for the probability for a range of values between x sub one and x sub two. So for instance here, I might be looking for the probability of um, something between 10 and 20. And so I wanna find this area in here so for any normal distribution, we can scale it into a standard normal distribution. This is where we convert an x value into a z value. You learned how to do this in chapter three. And by converting our x value into a z value, we are able to compare different sets of data consistently. So here, recall our formula is where we take our x value, subtract our mean, and divide it by our standard deviation. And so our, once we convert our x's into z values, note that on the right side, our z values are positive because our z's, these z values are above the mean. And then on the left, our z values are negative because these are below the mean. And essentially what we're doing is whatever our mean is, maybe your mean is 100 or 95 or 23, by converting it into a z value, we simplify it and change that mean into a zero. And then any particular x value that we're interested in will get converted to a z value. So we'll be talking about how many standard deviations away it is from the mean. So for our standard normal distribution, kind of a refresher, but here's our x distributed normally with a mean of 100. So that's where my mean is right here in the middle of our curve and our standard deviation of 50. So what is the z value if our x is 250? So we plug in our x of 250 minus 100 for our mean and divide it by our standard deviation using our calculator, we'd get 3. In other words, this means that 250 is 3 standard deviations or 3 increments of 50 units above the mean of 100. Recall in chapter 3 that you learned how to use Excel to standardize an x value into a z value. For the normal distribution, the first thing we have to do is find our mean and standard deviation. These will likely be given to you in the problems, but if it's not and you're given a data set, you know how to use Excel to find our mean and our standard deviation. The next step is to make sure we understand what is the event of interest we're trying to solve for. Then we'll be using Excel, in, in particular the norm.dist function, to find the cumulative probability. And then in step four, we're going to find the desired probability that we identified in step two using the knowledge that the total probability under our distribution is equal to one. 
recall in our chapter four that the probability rules say all our probabilities added up equal to one and that our Excel function for normal distribution gives us the cumulative probability from left to right. So it adds up all the probabilities starting on the left side up until whatever number you're interested in on the right side. So uh, you can use the formula builder by using uh, the formulas tab and uh, clicking on the insert function, selecting the statistical category and choosing norm.dist. Then the menu will appear and uh, for each component for our function, it will remind you what you need to put in. Uh, so our X value that we want to convert, our mean, our standard deviation, and uh, for cumulative, we're going to type in true. Then you'll hit OK. So let's look at an example. Suppose X is normally distributed with a mean of 8 and a standard deviation of 5. So our mean of 8 is right here. We want to know the probability that x is less than or equal to 8.6. That means I want to know the chance that x is going to be any particular value of 8.6 or below. That could include 0, negative 5, negative a million, all the possible numbers less than 8.6. Now here on the right I've got the um, hand calculations on how to convert your x value of 8.6 into a z value. So we can rewrite that the probability that x is less than or equal to 8.6 is the same as saying the probability of z is less than or equal to 0.12. So using Excel uh, and knowing that it gives us the cumulative probabilities, it's going to read from left to right up until 8.6. So we would type in equals norm.dist. 8.6 is the x value that we have here. 8 is our mean, and 5 is our standard deviation, and we type in true, because true will give us all the probabilities from left to right, so this shaded area right here. And when I type that in, I get the probability at 0.5478, or 54.78% of our data falls in here. So that's the likelihood that you're going to get some x value less than or equal to 8.6. Let's look at another example. Suppose that x is normally distributed with a mean of 8 and standard deviation of 5. So that's still the same. What we're changing now is the probability or for our event of interest. So here we want to find the probability that x is greater or equal to 7.5. So 7.5 is on my left side of my mean here. Recall my mean was 8. So it's 7.5 and I want to know greater than or equal to 7.5. So that means I'm interested in the right side of my distribution from 7.5 and on. And that'll include all numbers like 10, 15, a million, 3,000, all possible values that are greater than 7.5. Again, if you want to do it by hand to convert our x value into a z value, uh, we plug in our numbers here and rewrite it as the probability that z is greater or equal to negative 0.1. Now again, I'm, I want to show you how to do it by hand or where it comes from, but Excel does the heavy lifting for us. So again, knowing that Excel gives us the cumulative probability from left to right, it's going to tell us the area from here over to 7.5. But that's not the area we're interested in. We are interested in the area to the right. So we'll have to apply the complement rule that we learned in Chapter 4. So let's first find this area here using equals norm.dist, my x value is 7.5, my mean of 8, and my standard deviation of 5, and type in true. That'll give us that the area right here in white is 0 0.4602. But I don't want this area. I want greater than 7.5, this brown area here. So because I know my entire distribution, thanks to chapter 4, is equal to 1, I'm going to take 1 minus 0 0.4602, and that'll give me the probability that x is greater or equal to 7.5 at 0 0.5398. That's this area right here. Let's do another example. Suppose x is normally distributed with a mean of 8 and standard deviation of 5 still, but but now we're interested in the probability between two values, between 7.5 and 8.6. And 
So again, we can convert our x values into z values and restate our probability that uh, z is somewhere between negative 0.1 and 0.12. So here are our z values down here. Here are our x values. So with Excel, we're going to find the normal distribution of each of our x values of 7.5 and of 8.6 separately, and then we'll put it together. So first, we will type in norm.dist at 7.5 for our x, 8 for our mean, and 5 for our standard deviation, and then type in true. And so that gives us the area here in white at 0 0.4602. Then we have to do the same thing for our x value of 8.6. We'll type in equals norm.dist, our x of 8.6, our mean of 8, and our standard deviation of 5, and type in true, because it is cumulative. And that gives us 0 0.5478. So now I have two areas. The first for 7.5 is this white space here. And for 8.6, it's everything to the left. So from left all the way to 8.6. You'll show you that you'll notice here that we have overlapping areas. And so to get rid of the overlapping areas or to get rid of the white space so that we can only get this range right here in brown, we're going to subtract. So we'll take 0 0.5478, subtract 0 0.4602, and therefore the probability that our x is somewhere between 7.5 and 8.6 is 0 0.0876. Let's go ahead and practice using the worksheet, and you can use the Excel file I've provided. Let's say a population is normally distributed with a mean of 100 and a standard deviation of 20. We're going to find three different scenarios. First, where uh, we're looking for um, a value greater than 130. In part B, we're looking for a value that's less than 90. And in part C, we're going to find a value between 90 and 130. So here's our setup. In part A, we have x is greater than 130. And so here's my curve. So my mean of 100 and my x is 130 right here. So I'm going to use Excel to find this area here, because I know it always gives me left to right. But really, I'm interested in this blue shaded area. So we're going to be using the 1 minus our normal distribution. So uh, plugging in our x value of 130, our mean of 100, our standard deviation of 20, and true for cumulative. When I have my 1 minus this distribution, I'm essentially saying 1, which is my whole distribution, minus this white area right here through Excel is 0 0.9332. And we're subtracting that from 1 will give us our blue shaded area here at 0 0.0668. Let's look at uh, the next one, uh, part B, the probability that x is less than 90. So our 90 is to the left of our mean of 100, our mean's right here in the middle. And since we're doing less than some value, we're going to use um, our normal distribution that will tell us the probability from left to right. And fortunately, that is the shaded area we want, so we don't have to do anything with the complement rule. We're just going to use our normal distribution function. So we'll plug in our x of 90, mean of 100, and standard deviation of 20, and type in true. And that'll give us 0 0.3085 as the probability that we'll have less than, that our x is less than 90. So that our blue shaded area right here. Let's do one more part C. Now we're interested in finding the probability that x is between 90 and 130. So I've got my 90 and my 130 labeled here in my curve. We're going to find the area up to 90 using Excel. And we already know, since we solved for it in part B, that this is 0 0.3085. And we already solved for uh, 130 in part A, where we got 0.9332 for the normal distribution up to 130. And then so what we'll do, because we don't want this white part here, we will subtract. So we'll take my cumulative probability from left to right of 130 at 0 0.9332 and subtract it, uh, the probability, from left up to 90 of 0 0.3085. And the probability that x is going to be somewhere between 90 and 130 is 0 0.6247. And that's how we can use the standard normal distribution with the help of Excel 
to find the probability of a particular event. And by knowing these probabilities, we can now make business decisions uh, based on real data.